Shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Man Who Was Death. In a heavy concrete subcellar of a forgotten warehouse, two men in white lab jackets stand tensely watching a giant mass of laboratory machinery. There is the whine of electric power, the click of a stopwatch, nothing more. An experiment is beginning. And one, and two, and three. It hasn't taken yet, Hendricks. No, sir. Double the power for ten seconds. Mr. Lash. Well? We can't take the chance, sir. Why not? If we overload, there's a chance we blow up. I'll take it. But, Mr. Lash... This is my research, Hendricks. I know what I'm doing. You don't gamble without taking risks. Step it up. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... You got the power, you idiot. I told you ten seconds. What are you trying to do? The action started. Don't you hear it? Listen. By heavens, yes. Yes, you're right, Henry. It's going so fast, sir. Hey, it won't stop. We've got to get out of here, Mr. Lash. There's going to be a blow-up. We've got to get out of here. o'clock tonight, there was an explosion, Cranston. A dozen people phoned in. Patrolman checked and found a body in this place. No one ever knew there was a lab down here. Secret laboratory? A man killed in an explosion? Why call me in, Commissioner West? Well, in the first place, there were two men. This one, unidentified, killed in the blast. Second, also unidentified, crawled out. Left bloodstains on the stairs. Well? Why in blazes did he run away? What were they up to down here? Well, don't you know? You're the science expert. You tell me. They say an expert can reconstruct an experiment from a look at the apparatus. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. High power condensers. Mm-hmm. Yes, those terminals go to... Uh... Mm-hmm. Now, that debris might be the remains of... Uh-oh. Turn off the lights, Commissioner. What for? I want to see if we can see better in the dark. Are you crazy? No, I'm worried. Turn them off. Right. Well? Keep your eyes open and look. At what? Anything. Holy smoke, I'm seeing things. Sure? This whole place is flickering, like a luminous dot. Right, let's get out of here, quick. Hey! Come on, Weston, do what I say. Now I'll tell you what they were doing in there. Running a wildcat radium experiment. A radium experiment? Yes, a sort of super X-ray mechanism that can generate enormous quantities of radium energy. The experiment blew up. Saturated the lab with radioactivity. If we'd stayed in there any longer, we might have been fatally burned. Uh, No wonder it was secret. Commissioner, we've got to locate that man that got away. He's got to be found at once. Why the rush? Don't you understand? He was caught in the explosion. He's saturated with radioactivity. He'll poison everything and everybody he touches. He's walking dead. Are you kidding? I wish I were, Commissioner, but I'm not. We're in bad trouble, and we've got to find the medicine quick. myself to your office, I... Now, don't say anything more. Sit right here. That's right. Now, drink this. Thanks. Oh. Oh, it's better. What happened to you? George, I'm a dead man. Unless you can help me. What? You know anything to cure radiation poisoning? I'm depending on you, George. I'm, I'm saturated with Masonic material. 
sonic material. 27 grams were blasted into me. <laughs> I always had the secret, George. And I went too fast. But now I'm a burning man. Dead. Roger. What are you backing away for? I don't want to be poisoned too, Roger. Well, you've got to help me. I can't. There isn't any cure? No. But look, George, I've got a wife and two kids. I, 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 I was doing it for them. Now I've got to do something else for them. I've got to live. I put every cent I had into that experiment. I'm broke, stone broke. They'll starve You can't I... see your wife, Roger. You can't see anyone. You'll poison people with that radiation if you come too close. You may be poisoning me. No. You know it's the truth. You've got to be isolated. Oh, no, not yet. I've got to get money. Lots of money. You can't go, Roger. You've got to wait here no. until I can... Roger. Get out of the way. Roger, in heaven's name. I said get out of the way. Marshall's office. Dr. Marshall, this is Lamont Cranston. I'm working with the police department. We're calling every doctor and hospital in town, trying to identify an unknown man suffering from injuries and radiation poisoning. If such a patient visits you, would you... He has. What's that? He was here. He left. Can you identify him, please? I can. His name is Lash. Roger Lash. He lives at 20 Beacon Street. He's probably on his way home now. He's my friend, Mr. Cranston, but I hope you'll get him. I hate to say it, but he's safer... Dead. So if you don't mind, Mrs. Lash, I think the best thing to do now is wait right here until we hear from your husband. Of course. Of course, Mr. Cranston. Make yourself comfortable, won't you, please, Miss Lane? Thank you. If I only knew how badly Roger was hurt. Mrs. Lash, maybe you'd better sit down. I can't. I can't. I can't rest a second until I hear from him. Oh, this wretched experiment. Roger spent everything on it. All his time, his money, his energy. And now, his life. Easy now, Mrs. Lash. I'm sure that... That's Roger. It must be. Hello? Barbara, dear, this is Roger. Oh, Roger, darling. Barbara, I've... I've got some bad news for you. I... Had some trouble at the lab and... Roger, I know all about it. You know? From a man named Lamont Cranston. He's here now, waiting for you. Oh, Roger. Listen, listen, darling. You're not going to see me anymore. I can't see you and the kids without hurting you. Don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to provide for you before... Before I go. I'll send you money, lots of money. No, Roger. Let me talk to you, Mrs. Lash, please. Thanks, sir. You'd better take a moment. Right. Hello, Mr. Lash. This is Lamont Cranston speaking. Yes? You've got to get to a hospital at once. Hospitals can't save me. I'm a dead man now. You know that. For the sake of other people, Lash, you've got to be isolated. I'm not worried about other people, Mr. Cranston. I'm thinking of my wife. She's got to be provided for. I've only got a few days, and I'm going to make them count. <laughs> No use coming in, mister. I'm closing for the night. Can't you see the lights are out? We're locked up. It's a right? hold up. Why, is, is this a gag or something? Why, you're shining in the dark. You're, why, like you was burning or something, like a radium dial. Don't come close to me. You'll get burnt. I don't want to hurt you. I, I just want money. I want your money. Now, let's listen, mister. I'm sorry I can't explain. I haven't time. Now, get out of the way. You keep away from that register. There's only a couple of hundred dollars in there, mister. That'll do as a starter. Please, please, mister, don't take that money. I, I need it. I need it. You need it. You need it. You don't know what it is to really want money. I make a public announcement of the city commission? I do, Lamont. The entire metropolitan area has got to be alerted to the fact that Lash is still at large. A special broadcast is the quickest way I know to get a warning like that across. Have there been any more reports on Lash since the first robbery commission? 
Two more in the last hour, Margot. Speeding up his activity. Got to, I suppose. He knows he's living on borrowed time. It's horrible. Well, here we are. The radio room is right in there. All right, Commissioner, I'll do it. And don't pull your punches on the broadcast, Cranston. Tell them all the facts. Everyone in the city has got to know how dangerous Lash really is. the radio, will you, please? Okay. We'll get the jewel trays in for the window and tell Eddie to put a watch us away. Yeah. Ah, oh, good evening, sir. Just in time. Last minute, what you say? Well, I... Good Lord, what has happened to you? You look as if you'd been burned. I hope you're not going to give me any trouble. There's a hold-up. Hold-up? Hell and Eddie! The porter alarm, quick! Get the police! Shut up, you fool! Oh, my gosh. Quiet. You two, get behind the counter with him. You're not going to get away with it. Don't try to use that gun, miss. Please don't try. No, you would, wouldn't you? I told you not to give me any trouble. I warned you. But you wouldn't listen. You made me kill. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Lamont Cranston with a special warning. In cooperation with the police department, be on the lookout for Roger Lash, a victim of radiation poisoning. He's marauding the city tonight. Do not resist him. You'll recognize him by the burning radiation of his skin. Please report his whereabouts to police headquarters. But do not approach him. Do not touch him. He is dangerous. I repeat, he is dangerous. Thank you for the warning, Mr. Cranston. Thank you so much. Nothing can stop me now. Margot and Lamont are on the trail of Roger Lash, a scientist who has been violently burned by radiation. After a series of robberies and a brutal murder, the desperate Lash is still at large. Margot and Lamont are discussing the situation in the office of Police Commissioner Weston. The man's on a rampage. Two more robberies and now this murder at the jewelry store. Lord knows how many more murders will follow now. It's almost as though he's getting crueler, Lamont. More vicious. I'm afraid he is. His final stages is getting savage and primitive. He's got to be located, Commissioner. For the love of Mike, I've got the whole department working. What else can I do? I've got an idea how we can locate him. Now, go ahead. With telephones. Telephones? Yes, the city's a network, network of telephone wires that write like a, a web of invisible lines. Yes. Lash is radioactive. His body projects hard rays like X-ray gamma radiation. You explained that already. That's how he burns people. Well, you can hear that radiation on any telephone wire. It sounds like static. You mean if Lash comes near a telephone wire, it'll react to it. Right, Margot. That reaction can be checked and traced by technicians. We're going down to the central switchboard and have every line in the city opened. Then we're going to listen. Sooner or later, we'll hear Lash. We've got to. chairs and sit down. I patched this loudspeaker onto the open lines. We went started. When we hear what we're listening for, we'll tell the company their technicians will trace the interference in half a minute. All I hear is a humming. Let's be patient. 
lot of sounds like a thousand people talking or whispering. Do you hear that? Yes, that's the city winding up its talk for the day. Yeah. Got to hear him soon. Can't walk anywhere in this town without passing a phone wire under the street, overhead, along buildings. Maybe. I don't hear him. Wait and listen. Hey, I think... Not now. What? Listen. I hear static. You hear the burning man. That's it. You sure, Cranston? I'm positive. Come on, we'll get a trace and get to him. white with fear and terror and flight. Come all and worship. I'm the burning man. Roger? Who's that? Roger? It's Barbara. I've been waiting. Barbara. Oh, oh darling. You're so sick, so hurt. Oh, Roger. I'm not Roger Lash. Darling, you've got to stop. These terrible things that you've been doing... Robbing, killing. I'm the burning man. At first it was for me, wasn't it? For your wife and your children. You were afraid we'd starve. But now it's because you like the terror and the fear. Get out of here. Go away. I've been waiting and waiting. I knew you'd come this way soon, Roger. I love you, darling. I love you too much to let you do this. Go away for the love of heaven. Get out of here. Believe me, darling. I'm not killing Roger Lash. I'm killing what he's become. Roger Lash is dead already. You can't kill me, you fool. You can't kill me. I'm the burning man. You... I'm the burning man. I told her to get away. I warned her. Oh, here they come. Gotta get away. The laboratory, that's at the secret entrance to the laboratory. Somewhere around here, Cranston? That's right, Commissioner. Let's look sharp now. It took us ten minutes to get here. He could have gone quite a distance in that time. The question is, which way? Well, we'll split up. You go south, Commissioner. Margaret and I'll go north. Right. I'll have the men who were stationed around the laboratory search, too. But... Come on, even if we do find him, what are we going to do? We can't touch him. Have to worry about that when we do find him. Now, I think we're close to Roger's laboratory. The neighborhood looks familiar. Is that where he's going? I don't know yet. Wait a minute. What is it? Bad news for you, Margot. What? Someone shot Lash. He's been wounded. The trail of bloodstain starts here. Who could have done it? Barbara, perhaps. She's about the only one who knew where his lab was. Come on, I'll go this way. But if bullets couldn't kill him, what can Lamar? I don't know. Maybe that radiation in his body is keeping him alive. Oh, Lamar. It's not pleasant, is it? If we don't get him now, we may never get him. But what can we do? Wait a second, Margot. There's a new entrance to the sub cellar. I didn't see this when Weston and I were here before. Doors open? Uh, Miss... Can you hear somebody moving around down there? Margot, I want you to do a very brave thing. All right, Lamont. Open this door and call to Lash. Leave the rest to me. Will you do it? Yes. Good girl. My name is Margot Lane. What do you want? What do you want? I want to talk to you, Mr. Lash. I don't know who you are, but you must be out of your mind coming here. I've got to talk to you, Mr. Lash. Talk to me. What have you got to say to the burning man? Well, talk. The police are outside. This place is surrounded. You haven't got a chance. Got a chance? (laughs) Very funny. The burning man, Miss Lane. The entire city, the entire... entire country is terrified of my flame and fire. Why, I could walk out of this land through a whole cordon of policemen and burn them down as I go. (laughs) Uh, Who's that? Who's laughing? 
This is the shadow, Roger Lash. <laughs> shadow? You couldn't burn down a cordon of men, Roger Lash. Oh, I could, I could. I'm the burning man. I'm fire and destruction. A walking holocaust. Your flame is dying, Roger Lash. Your power is ebbing. No, no, no. My flame will never die. Your power is ebbing. Your day is over, Burning Man. Oh, no, it isn't. It can't be. I've put the machinery together again. I'll charge myself again with fire and flame. I'll be strong again, strong and powerful. You're playing with broken bits, Lash. The explosion destroyed your apparition. Oh, no, no, no. I'll bring back my power. It's useless, Lash. Check the rheostat, Hendrix. Plug in the connecting coils, Hendrix. That's it. Now bring the current up to 30.105 and set. Ready, Hendrix. Rev it up. Rev up the power, Hendrix. Hendrix. The power is gone, Lash. Gone? Gone forever. The burning man. Gone forever. Yes, Lash. Now you can be taken to where medical authorities will do everything possible to save what's left of your ebbing life. All right, Margot Lights. Right. Now, let's see. What have you been developing, Margot? Making sure that you don't have radiation poisoning. Oh? Well, you don't. Oh. A spot of light on the film. You're perfectly safe. Guess we got you out of Lash's place just in time. Oh, Lamont, it was a terrible experience. Lash was really out of his mind at the end, wasn't he? Completely. What had started out as an honest motive for money to help his family developed into a crazy lust for power. Burning man. Must have thought he was a god of some sort, spreading death and terror wherever he went. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Weston said they'd found Barbara, his wife. Yes, as a matter of fact, if we hadn't been in such a hurry, we'd have seen her when we drove up with Weston. Is she going to be all right? She recovers from the shock and strain. She'll be okay. And how about Lash himself? Well, it's hard to tell. He's only been at the hospital a few hours. He was a criminal, yes. He must pay the law for his crimes. Somehow, Margot, I... I hope a miracle happens. And he lives. <laughs> <laughs> 